Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the Facebook group tonight, Friday night, 7 p.m. I hope that you are all, I hope that you all had a, a wonderful week and I hope that you are all having a wonderful Friday evening. You know, I'm coming in live today to talk about a career advancement topic. I do, I've been doing a lot of career advancement coaching lately, and I just absolutely love it. And for those of you who are tuning in, feel free to hit me with a comment, and because um, I can't see that on Facebook, who is, guys, just see people are watching, but I don't know who you are. So just say hello and where you are um, coming in from. But uh, so I've been doing a lot of career advancement coaching. Um, and one of the topics that comes up is, you know, what skills do I need in order to move forward in my career? And so the process that I take people through is really about defining what is your end career goal result, right? So when we look at it, you know, where do you want to be headed? You know, in a year from now, two years from now, um, do you want to be a part-time major gift officer? Do you want to be working in an annu annual fund capacity? Is it the fact that you maybe want to be a capital campaign manager? But you have to start with that long-term goal in mind. And I help clients to figure out, you know, between their, the intersect, I call it the intersection of their skills and what interests them is their career path. And I, there's a long process and a coaching module that I take people down to unearth that. Most cases when I get to the question of what are you good at, what are your skills, people tend to go, I don't know, right? So that's a very, very important question because everything else hinges from that self-exploration process of finding out what your skills are. Figure it out, right? Like if you go to rewrite your resume, you wanna highlight your skills. If you wanna go revamp your LinkedIn profile, you need to highlight your skills. Okay, so that's all part of that. However, when it comes to professional development planning and you, you have your long range career goal in mind, the steps that I take clients through and recommend is that first, once you know what that is, you identify your skills. And that again, as I said, it's a very, very hard process to take people through because there's, there are people watching right now. Comment, hit the comment box and tell me, what are your skills? What, who are you first? I can't see who it is, but what are your skills? Your top three skills. You need to know that for your resume, for your LinkedIn, whatever it is, type that in. So once you have done a skills analysis and you identify your skill gaps for the position that you eventually want to get to, what I recommend to folks, there's a couple of things. Number one, doing informational interviews with, for those people who already hold positions like you have or that you're seeking. So if it's a major gift officer position, meet with other major gift officers in similar roles in organizations. Um, so I walk through helping people figure out what mission is best for them. So find people, go on LinkedIn, you know, ask to have a cup of coffee with them, and actually sit down with them and ask them the question of, what skills do I need in order to be successful in this role? Another way of finding that out, I'm not a big proponent of applying, you know, the success rate of applying for jobs through job boards like LinkedIn, AFP are very, very low. I talk about working the hidden job market, but I do recommend that you actually go on to LinkedIn, um, look at the jobs, Indeed, take a look at the job titles that you're looking at for a long range career aspiration and look at the skills and experiences that are listed as part of that job listing or sometimes you can even get a job posting or job description. Once you have that, I also recommend that you take a look at 
conference programs. Take a look at AFP International Conference. Take a look at some workshops. I'm sure we're all signed up. I post my workshops there. Take a look at what's trending um, in terms of topical areas. And I highly recommend that as a fundraising professional, any fundraising professional, that you stay on top of the technological trends that are happening out there. So look at the workshops that are listed on the conference program. Pick a few out that have to be that are related to technology, digital, fundraising, whatever, but stay up to tune with what's happening with technology and fundraising. And then look at the programs for things like, you know, what are the major tracks? What are the particular trending topical areas within those conference tracks that maybe you want to be signing up for to enhance your skills? Now from there, write this all down. Put together, and how many of you actually on the live, because there's some people on the live right now, how many of you actually have a professional development plan? If you do not have a written professional development plan, just private message me for a template to help you to create that professional development plan. Write it down. Have a plan for yourself. The other important thing is, is be accountable to that plan. Make time. When I am working with coaching clients, there are two things that I hear the most often from people who I am coaching. The first one is, and I just had a great coaching session with a fundraiser today who took my um, resolution maker, um, I bought one of my resume, resolution maker sessions, and those are gonna, still available. Um, and um, I would urge you to try one out. Um, we talked about what are some of the challenges that are holding you back from getting to your goals. The two things that I hear the most often are, time, right? Hit a like or love or whatever if that's something that you're struggling with. Time as well as unrealistic expectations, right? So um, share the love if you also feel the same way. So uh, when it comes to professional development planning, you actually have to write a plan down, but then also commit to taking the steps, finding the time, in your busy schedule to actually commit to working your professional development plan, whether it is taking the training, whether it is you know going to the conference, the AFP International Conference, whether it is volunteering in a certain capacity to build your skill sets. Um, you, and then the other piece of that, the last step, is evaluating. So always looking back a year later after you created your professional development plan and saying, how much progress did I make towards achieving my professional development plan? What trainings did I take? Trainings in what topical areas were they? Did I take any technology training? Did I take some classes, some coursework? Did I do some volunteer work that will ultimately um, end up at you reaching your three-year goal of getting, let's say, a major gift officer position at an animal rights organization. If you do not start with the goal in mind, the end results, then you're not going to be able to really truly work this professional development plan other than just getting more training and skills and those kinds of things. It's always important to start with the end in mind and that's how coaching can help you. Define the end goal that you want for your career and then actually put the action steps together. Now, I'm going to say this for those of you who are interested in a little taste of coaching and you feel as if your New Year's resolution has gone whew, out the window. I am, I just had a session today, but I want to fill up those slots and I want to help you out. So I am dropping that one hour coaching session down to 3750. What is that worth to you to come out with a resolution, a New Year's resolution, have me hold you accountable, and then actually come up with um, some concrete action steps for six months, um, um, one month, one week, 
in your next action step. I guarantee you that after that session, you will feel um, renewed about your work. You won't feel, I know some folks are already saying, oh my gosh, I have such big goals for 2020. I don't have the time. I don't have the staff. How am I going to get to my goals? And so that resolution maker session is absolutely critical in helping you to crystallize and make realistic expectations. That's the key. Realistic expectations and then to create six months, one year, I mean six months, one month, you know, a week, and what's your next action step to moving that goal forward. So if you're interested, I'll put the link in the comments. Um, I'm dropping at $10 down at $37.50. And I hope, I hope to see some of my favorite Facebook peeps booking a session with me, right? Like what's one hour of your time? What's your goal? I mean, like if you were to like, this person was speaking about developing a lower to mid-level range program because she was focused so much on major gifts and their bottom was eroding. How much could that be worth to you for one hour, 37.50, I know it's worth more than that, to be able to really put together an action plan to making that happen. Hey, listen, I've been so pleased, I've been so happy to share with you how to do some professional development planning. This is a passion of mine, is to help you advance in your career. It's what I love to do, career coaching. So um, hit me up with a comment. Um, I can send you a professional development plan template for free if you don't have one. And I would urge you to take time this weekend to really think about two things, your skill sets, because that's what's gonna sell you in this competitive market and your professional development plan. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. I'm still in Australia. The fires, it's been raining. Um, the fires are still going on, but hopefully this rain is helping. So please, please, please pray for more rain. I will see you next week. By the way, we have a ton of new people in the Facebook group. I think I let in like 12 people last night. So I'm going to be doing a nice welcome post for them. So have a great weekend, everyone. Love seeing you in the group.